Good afternoon and welcome to the Committee on City Services and the Northampton City Council. My name is Maureen Carney, uh, Chair of this committee, and I'll let folks introduce themselves. City Councilor Mary Ann Large, Vice Chair. Uh, <coughs> uh, Councilor Jim Nash. Councilor Dennis Bidwell, Board 2. Okay, thanks folks. Um, so I'll note that this meeting is being video and audio recorded and ask if there is a uh, motion to accept the minutes of the previous meeting. Well, I don't think we have anything actually. really. Didn't we approve them at the last meeting? Yeah, actually, did. that's right. And I haven't yet. Done yeah, the, I, I wouldn't would imagine you'd have those now. So let's dispense with that. And um, I want to thank uh, Marie Westberg for coming again. And again, I apologize for last week. We just didn't know we were going to have those land takings also referred to us. And thank you. Thank you for coming back to meet with us. So um, I think, uh, please, if you could join us at the table. Okay. And um, I know you've read this report, and thank you for forwarding it to so we had it as a written reference, and a couple of counselors wanted to follow up on, on some of those things. So I'll, um, either of you would like to begin, or Councilor Nash? Well, I, I think I got my questions in right at the end last time, and I'm, I think I'm good. Councilor? Um, thank you for being here, Murray. Sure. Um, you've already seen my questions that I've sent. Yes. Um, from your report, you state that 390 members join the Senior Center each year. How many new members are Northampton residents? I would like to know that. Yep, so I went a little bit further than that even. So um, I didn't actually bring the breakdown per town of non-residents but um, uh, in my tenure since April 30th of 2018 we've had 668 new members join so we have a total of 2,662 members 2,015 of those are residents how Six, many 2,015 and 641 are non-residents and then prior to the year prior to my coming on there were 1,994 members and there were 1,515 residents and 479 non-residents. So we have people coming, I mean we will have, you know, like one or two people coming from as far as Worcester um, and they might not be very often and then we'll have uh, we have there are 41 people coming from Williamsburg I know that um, but there are people coming from all the communities surrounding Northampton basically um, in very my main numbers. concern was how many residents we had in Northampton and I thank you for that mm -hmm. my second question how often or what are the statistics from home visits by the social worker or by you? What are some of the issues of the homebound that you address? Nothing was listed under social services to identify how this group of seniors is acknowledged. Can you explain that? So the social worker does do home visits, but because we are basically um, the gateway to, to services and Highland Valley Elder Services is actually the ASAP for Hampshire County. Um, they are the primary provider of casework and home visits, um, but our social worker does do um, visits for specific issues or for uh, crisis situations. So, um, let's see. Um, they are provided on an unneeded basis. Um, our short term until the ASAP, Highland Valley Elder Services, or a private pay company can complete an intake and begin case management, home care, or other services. So often um, there'll be a con first contact, Michelle will speak with a family member or a senior and assess what their needs are. And if um, they don't qualify for the ASAP services or to get private pay services, 
then she may go. Or if it's a situation where um, there are some barriers, or you know, there's a language barrier, or there's a um, an issue that needs immediate attention, she will do that. But we have one social worker, and we don't really have the capacity to do a lot of outreach. Um, we work with other agencies to address that, including Northampton Neighbors. Um, you know, I would like to have two social workers. I would like to have an outreach worker. Um, some senior centers do have an outreach worker, and that would be a direct line that we would need to fund and get funding for. Um, but because we work so closely with our partners in the community, um, we're able to do a lot of collaborative care. Um, that doesn't mean there isn't a need for more, but I think that also when there's a breakdown in the bureaucracy of other institutions, often what happens is if people call Highland Valley and they don't ask the right question, they may not get steered to the right service. Mm -hmm. And that's often the case, and I think that sometimes that may come from the consumer not knowing what to ask for, and it may come from the receptionist not asking further exploratory questions with that patron. Um, and so that's one thing we are working on, is really making sure we're doing a thorough assessment when someone calls. Even if they're calling for something, uh, one thing, and they haven't asked us about other things, we're asking a series of questions so we can identify a need, so that we can make the right referrals, and we, we often say, it's likely that if you qualify for this, you qualify for many other things, and we want to make sure that we give you all the resources available to you. Whether you decide to use them or not, it's important that you know about them. Um, so that was, you know, I did report on our new information referral line, and that is one way I'm trying to address the fact that we have one social worker who could spend all her time returning phone calls, and I don't want that to happen. I want it to be that she's really giving one-on-one -on -one quality time to people who really need it and that we're referring people to the right places rather than having her just calling people back and saying, actually, you need to talk to this other agency because we don't do that. How many social workers have we had since Patty was there and Linda was there? How many have we had on staff at a time or how many? Social workers, one. We've always had one social worker. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, but there are tremendous needs. And so we, we do have other agencies coming in who have hours at the center, like we have Community Action comes in, PBTA mm -hmm. comes in, Interfaith mm -hmm. comes in, um, there, Northampton Neighbors comes in. So there are other people that um, patrons can meet with to find out about services or to get services, like the Shine Counselor or the, mm -hmm. um, you know, so we just want to make sure that if we don't provide it, that we're referring for it, but also that we're educating people about what's available. And, and we did, for the Health and Safety Fair, produce a resource booklet, which in the past had been a program, basically, for the event, the one-day event, but this year we did a resource booklet which has, that will get used all year round and will get updated every year so that it has every kind of service you could want in it of local providers so that's helpful Thank yeah you. okay um, hmm? are there uh, any uh, specific <coughs> programs or initiatives for the hispanic population i didn't see anything listed in your report and my reasons for asking that is because peg keller and i and patty way back opened the doors because there was difficulties with the Hispanics who were elderly. They felt that they just were not welcome there. So we all worked very tirelessly and opened the doors and Linda continued on with that and I didn't see anything on your report. So I think I mentioned that when I was talking about Northampton Neighbors. So we are, um, we are working with Northampton Neighbors and we've um, co, you know, we've partnered on a few grants that are specifically trying to target outreach to the community, low-income people and Latino people. We're also working with um, Smith College, a professor at Smith College, um, who's interested in um, 
older adults who are minorities or LGBTQ. Um, and so we're doing several projects. Um, the Northampton Neighbors work is the conversational Spanish group that I talked about last time was is um, a partnership with Northampton Neighbors that we're trying to, to launch and we're working with their outreach worker um, who is developing some um, relationships with people who are interested in sort of championing some, some programming at the Senior Center because we really want it to come from constituents themselves. We don't want to dictate what would be good for them. We want them to say what they want and um, basically to, to create a sense of place. So we are talking about um, having a monthly program like our LGBTQ luncheon where there may be programming and a meal that's monthly for the Hispanic community. Um, and also we'll be doing a, um, a city circle. They're doing, Northampton Neighbors is doing neighborhood circles and we're gonna do a city circle. So anyone, because not everybody, you know, you'll get to choose your neighbors. So, so you may not wanna go to a neighborhood circle. You might wanna go and meet other people from different parts of the city. You know, I mean, it just adds another option. So we're gonna also have that. Um, but yeah, we, we are very aware that there should be more diversity at the senior center. Definitely. Yeah. Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah. and excuse me, Frank. So, Councillor, I know I you have one, one, more. Four, one more question. Would you be patient for the one more, or would you, is there something oh, related to it? There's only one. Well, I'm, I'm, okay. Okay. No, you can go ahead and speak. Or, or well, I, 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 just, I just want to say that as a general comment that uh, uh, you're, I was very impressed with your presentation last week. And, oh, and thank the, you. And the wide variety of of services and I mean for the for the resources and staffing of the senior center it strikes me as a, a the volume of activity and the variety of activity is, is, is really to be to be commended. And then when I looked at your written report I was even even more impressed and when I and I know a lot of it is what you can do is through through partnerships and I hear specifically from the folks at the Y and you know, the neighbors about the the robust nature of your of your partnership, and I realize that's how a, a lot of things happen. Um, I, I I just had a, a, a general question, and, 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 and this is probably one of the questions you've been anticipating. There, 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 there is obviously some some concern out there. It's just described as the climate, the friendliness, the changed nature of the senior center. I just wanted to give provide you an opportunity in a general way to. To, to, to address that. Yes, so um, I I think that, um, you know, the people who are happy aren't, aren't yelling that from the rooftops. It's usually the other, you know, the other way around, that people who are unhappy are vocal. Um, and I think that there, there are several reasons I think some people are unhappy, and it's because there's been change. Change is hard. Um, I think specifically it's harder for seniors, um, and especially people who've had the Senior Center be their place. Um, we've made some shifts, but I think there's been shifts with every director, like each director has had a, a little bit of a different focus. Um, and a lot of people are really happy about some of the changes, and so there's always going to be a handful of people who don't, who don't agree with the changes, and I think when they say that it feels less welcoming, I think what they're actually upset about is um, like that we don't have Mary's Mini Sale going anymore, or that we, we don't sell books any longer. Um, and there are really good reasons for those things. Um, most senior centers aren't running gift shops anymore. Um, it takes up a lot of our time and capacity, and we're putting our energy into a lot of other things, and we're doing a lot and it takes a lot of work. I think one of the other things is that because we've had a lot of staffing shifts over the time that I've been there, that we're a little bit less out in the in the fray is we'd like to, you know, we'd like to be more out in the on the floor basically building relationship and I we're very aware that we want to nurture that more, but I think that the seniors, you know, they they say, you've never come in and talked to us before. You, you never come by. And I think 
um, so they don't they don't always feel like we're communicating um, but none of the people who are complaining have actually come and talked to me they're just going to the paper and calling the mayor and I'm very willing to talk with them um, and so that's why I'm having this coffee with the director because I think I think that so there's some people who are unhappy about changes and I think there's also a lot of confusion about um, the role of the Council on Aging or the way decisions get made or also like sometimes I'll give information like I have gone into all the fitness classes and explained any changes or um, you know people were upset that an instructor left we didn't push her out that the rumors kind of build off of any information that we give people kind of fill in blanks rather than asking questions sometimes and I think that's how rumors start um, but you know we're trying to provide better services we're not trying to um, take away what people love we're trying to actually create a better stronger program for the fitness program so I think there's just a lot of misunderstanding um, so I'm hoping that we can really kind of iron out some of these details I think that people sounds like some people are going to come to the council meeting on Thursday um, and that people will come to the coffee hour maybe um, and that I'll be able to explain some of these things not everyone always wants to hear the reasons sometimes people you know they just want what they want and we're trying to make everybody happy but I don't think we can make everyone happy like we 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 will hear the complaints and I am hoping that I will um, be able to you know sort of calm some of the upset um, but I do think sometimes that the the complaining or the upset can can kind of take on a life of its own um, and so having a sit down I think will help um, and I do think it's a small a small group of people you know that are making a lot of noise <laughs> about it um, because if you were to go down to the senior center I don't think you would see people unhappy you wouldn't it's bustling I mean it's there are times where it's quieter but it's really busy um, I mean we had 10 people in an art class today we had you know 40 something people at lunch it, there's a lot happening a lot of people coming so um, and I also think we're going through a little bit of a shift in culture because more people are coming and different people are coming so I think any any time there's a little change or there's a shift in um, you know participants I think there it's just natural that there's a resettling and I think it's going to take time and I'm, I'm making a real effort to you know go out and talk to people more often um, you know I, I I am in my office a lot doing a lot of work as are my staff but um, you know it's not that we're not approachable or that we're grumpy and mean we are certainly not you know we are um, I think that there have been things like the articles in the paper where things have been misconstrued or misunderstood and the Gazette is not fact-checking um, and then there are also things sometimes that I can't I can't actually talk about because there's confidential things going on so um, people may not understand all the nuances of what is going on when we're dealing with specific situations um, and a lot of things that have happened that I think have sort of escalated have been um, due to complaints we've received about behavior of patrons treating other patrons badly and we've tried to intervene and then that has come back as a big drama and we are just trying to provide the space and the programming for people to have a good time and we require that people just they, they act in a respectful manner towards each other not um, you know I've said you know 
you don't have to like each other. We there, we always in society we, we might come up against people that we don't really like, but we have to be respectful, and that's the only requirement is that we that we try to get along so that we can all enjoy the use of this building. Um, so I think that um, whatever it is you're hearing from your constituents, or um, I I wouldn't the the paper is pretty misrepresentation of what's going on. Thank you, Sam. Thank you very much for that. Yes. And can I just ask one very quick follow-up question? Just, just to, I, th I think I understand this, but just so, just for the record, the role of the council on aging versus your role in management and your reporting responsibilities, just, just, so, mm -hmm. just so that's clear to everybody. You want me to explain that? Yes. Yes. Can. So I think that I think there's been a lot of confusion about this, and I'm not sure since I can't write to the paper, um, or at least my boss doesn't. I, I think that's not something that that city departments do. Um, but um, there's been a lot of confusion. I think even since my onboarding about the role of the council, and the role of the council is advisory, and they are the voice of the community, and and I need them to give me feedback about how things are going and whether we are doing what is necessary to serve older adults in Northampton and um, but they don't supervise me or dictate to me um, I am of course going to take their input um, I'm going to convene with them and talk about these things and that's what we're doing um, but I think that that residents don't understand the process or what a, a governing and a non-governing, what the difference is between a governing and a non-governing board. What are you talking about, council? council are you talking agent. about the board of trustees? The council, council on aging. Oh, oh, that was what he asked. Oh, okay. The right. council on aging. I just wanted, wanted you to explain that it's yes. not a board of directors to which you report. It's yes, a, it's and so the recent thing in the paper really was, uh, you know, uh, there's clearly, misunderstanding about the role of the Council on Aging, which is a body of representatives of older adults from the community that advises me in my role, and my boss is the mayor. So I don't, um, you know, I think that, I think people just don't understand that. So th th thank you for the clarification. Yes. And, and only to clarify that, so for example, if the Council on Aging um, made a demand of some sort of you, um, you I would, would still need to get, you would still need to uh, ask the mayor because the mayor yes. is the direct authority of your position in, in all departments per our check. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I am not um, leading with no oversight, and I do answer to the mayor and. The council, if they feel strongly about something, I will, I will certainly yes. be listening to them. And you would communicate those concerns further up the chain then? To of them. course. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So um, I just had one more clarifying question just before yeah. I go back to uh, Councilor Lavarges. Just because I know you mentioned and, and you did clarify it earlier. I just don't have my notes, but um, the coffee with the director, is that a single event or is that a. No, I'm going to do it monthly. Okay. Um, my experience in Williamsburg was that um, when you create a forum for people to come, that often the people who um, who aren't, don't want to be part of positive working together don't come, and it's the people who do want to to work together collaboratively that come. So I'm I'm hoping that you know some people will come and hear will ask their questions and come and give me feedback and that it won't be um, an angry mob. You know, I, I think, I don't think that um, this is something that's unresolvable. I, I do think that we just need to, to talk about these things. And I am rolling out a, at the council meeting this Thursday, I drafted a, um, a new complaint process and sort of defined some of the ways that people will be asked to give feedback so that they know it's not just the suggestion box where they can give feedback, that they know that we're gonna be doing surveys and evaluations where they 
can give direct feedback and that they can also file a formal complaint because I think that it hasn't been clear also to people how exactly they can have a voice and I think that's what ha that's why people go to the paper and I think that's why they um, feel frustrated because they they certainly haven't come and asked to talk to me but maybe they don't feel comfortable doing that I don't know but as a follow-up so an initiative like this with the complaint procedure and all that is something typical that you would bring to the council on aging um, for their reactions and yeah for their, their feedback yes. yeah okay and um, and then in terms of uh, and otherwise I, I know that the mayor you know um, knows what's going on but it's not so, I mean something that uh, procedural is not something that then would uh, you would basically be working on your own in that initiative and would be seeking advice from the council on aging and then any, any well the mayor will s certainly give me feedback on it as well um, yeah, and complaints should come to me, um, the count, and I can bring them to the council to get their feedback. If, but the the council really doesn't handle complaints, and they don't. Right, um, that's not what I meant. I think I there's meant. been confusion about that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't mean that. I just meant in terms of rolling out an initiative that's you know a bit of a change and a process piece that people will need to. I think it, it's not even a change. It's just that it was sort of um, um, there. It wasn't formal. I think that in every senior center, the director is the person that people go to for complaints. It's just that I think that there's been confusion here, um, and I'm not sure why that is exactly. But I'm trying to clear it up. <laughs> okay. Excuse yeah. me. Oh, that's I know. Absolutely. Just the last question, Murray. Mm -hmm. um, on this meeting coming up November 18th, it's scheduled what at 9:30? What room is that going to be in? In the bistro. In the bistro. And it's going to be what receiving ideas and input and comments from seniors. What, what's this all about? So I'm providing a forum for people to have the opportunity to talk to me um, without having to make an appointment or basically it's sort of a little open forum for discussion and I'm hoping to, you know, there may be more topics than there's time to address and, you know, I, but I think that it will get some dialogue going rather than um, I just I don't think that it's productive to go to the paper. I don't think that's been a productive um, way to communicate. <laughs> so I'm hoping that people who have complaints or concerns or ideas will come to coffee with the director and that they will also use the process that I'm outlining for complaints or for suggestions and that they will also hear from me things about that are clarifying but also about things that we're working on that they may not know about <coughs> even though I do put everything I try to address everything ahead of time in my articles in the Chronicle but I know not everybody reads them or they forget you know or they they don't connect one thing to the other sometimes and so if, if I have the opportunity to sort of talk about how I am thinking about their re the sort of upgrading of the lobby and making it homier and you know that those are things I want too you know it's um, you know I, I think there are different ideas about what that should be and I'm going to be looking for feedback about what the changes should be I'm not I'm not do you do this addicted. monthly or I'm just starting it just starting yes I think that might have been all your questions. Councilman Ash, or anyone else just as a follow up? Or yeah. <coughs> uh, uh, during uh, Council Bidwell's uh, questions and comments, it reminded me that we cut things short last time and we didn't get to be able to say thank you for coming in and sharing all of this, this great work that's going on. That, you know, I, I you know, the the level of collaboration that's going on I mean that's what's really gonna you know produce the most benefit for uh, 
the, the human service organization like this. And that, um, you know, with Northampton Neighbors, the Y, and then all of the other stuff that's going on, it's, it's really impressive. And I want to thank you for that. And yeah. it, um, the, the other thing is that um, I, I, I do remember when we um, uh, appointed you, hired you, whatever it was we did, <laughs> that there was a lot of pushback against that. And it seems like some of that is still going on. And that, um, that I, I hope that you can weather things a little bit longer. I, I see some really good work going on here and, and I admire you uh, taking the opportunity to do the outreach to invite people in and you know maybe maybe dialogue can occur and but I applaud you making that effort. So um, thank you. So anyway, I, I thank you for coming in and I, this was really impressive. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Councilor. And then as a final comment, as you know, um, I don't know that we've actually met with you and we're the, the Committee on uh, City Services. So part of, just so you understand that it's part of the City Council and we oversee all of the um, uh, public safety, so police and fire and the Board of Health and all the people heard inspector. from. Yeah, and the building inspector and, oh. you know, numerous. And so we hadn't had the chance I can remember, so I apologize that it's taken so long and that I may not see you again because this will be my last term. Yeah. But uh, other counselors will still be here and I'm sure that they would agree with me that we'd love to hear from you more often. And yeah. I too want to thank you for all you're doing and thank you um, again for coming in today. Of course, second time. I'd be glad to come back. I'd be glad to send you a... Oh, and I know one more thing I wanted to ask you. So, for the... How can this committee, is there anything specific you can think of, or the city council in general, support you more in your delivery of services to elders? Well, I think it's always, um, I mean, you probably hear from your constituents directly about things that are happening. And I think always encouraging them to ask questions instead of, you know, not jump to conclusions, but actually find out more information if they're upset um, because we do want them to understand the reasons behind things that we do or if um, you know it's often I think that when we explain the reasons for something people they, they can understand they say oh I, I, that makes sense um, but first the first reaction often is I'm I feel like I'm losing something that's important to me and I really, you know, I understand that. I understand that feeling of not wanting things to change. So I think if um, you're encountering people who are upset, encourage them to explore the reasons and to to remember that I I have my, I have their best the best intentions in mind. That it's um, we are actually t really trying to serve the community well. Um, Okay. <laughs> it looks like uh, Council of the Barge has a follow yes, up. Thank you. I have to say, with the constituents, not just on my ward, but throughout the city, I have not heard not a one of them ever say that this whole outcry is about you being hired versus Heather. That I can say that. So I want to clarify that. That's helpful, and it is helpful, though, to uh, remind us that we deal with um, many of our constituents are also your uh, service receivers, mm -hmm. and so we just want to make sure we can right. help that help that way. Now, why would they become the city council first? She means the council Perfect. on aging. Oh, yes, all her references to council <laughs> council on aging. My council. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I I think. I think sometimes there's complicated um, layers to the dynamics of, of people, but also of a community. And so, you know, wherever there is, um, has been trauma or upset, you know, people may feel like it's not resolved for them or that that's not what they wanted. And it may not be connected at all. You may be right. But I do think that, um, change is hard for people and 
I represent change, right? I came in to a system that was already in place and I made some changes. And I did them for good reasons. And I think that people are adjusting and some people were thrilled from the get-go and some people weren't so thrilled. But I, I think that, um, you know, that we are we're fo we're focusing on food and transportation. We're focusing on some really important things, and we have movies and free popcorn and I mean and lunch. You know, I mean I think even bring it tonight. There's a lot of good <laughs> there's a lot of good stuff going on. So I I think I think it's just partly human nature to to you know we we tend to focus on things that uh, rub us the wrong way and. We don't always focus on what's going well, and so I, I think we need to all we need to all work together on seeing things in a clearer way. How many people do you think will show up at that meeting? I don't know. I went. I mean, I met with the Duplicate Bridge Group, and mm -hmm. um, and that went very well, and they're all still coming, and all the fitness people are. You know, we might have lost a few, but um, with some of the upset, but but the Y classes are thriving. So all this this picture that's being painted in the paper is really not accurate. Um, I think it's <coughs> the view of a select group of people. Some who of the are men upset. I've never even heard of in this study. That some of the right. people who are writing the paper, I think, are chiming in and have no they have no involvement in any of it. Hmm. So. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, sells papers, so. Right. <laughs> but anyway, I I would like for people to be happy. That is my my wish. That well, makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, oh, oh, oh yes, then one, please one, one, one more. One, one I just more. wanted to let people know that we do have a five o'clock meeting here. So if you're no. if your questions oh, I, I, are concerned, are going to be more than twenty. Some of us right now are going to go twenty three minutes. <laughs> You're so right to point out that folks always react. There's always more disappointment about something that's lost than there is excitement about something that's been added. That's, 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 that's just human nature. And uh, some, there are always going to be folks who don't have a, are not going to give anyone the benefit of the doubt and uh, are going to develop theories about what's going on and run the paper. And so I think the best we can do as counselors is when we hear something, encourage folks to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Go find the facts uh, before you start mouthing off. And, um, so it's, it's good for us to be reminded that that's our job here. So thank you again for coming. Yeah. Thanks okay. for having me. Great. Thank you. Okay. Oh, and I just want to point out for my other counselors here, this was an excellent conversation and to, to let your folks, I'm sure that you'd like folks to be able to view this um, in order to just hear what yeah, you had to say to us, which was so informative and helpful. No, I want to attend that meeting too. I want to hear what goes on there. And on the 18th, a yeah. reminder then that on the 18th, November 18th, is coffee with the director in the bistro at the senior center. 9.30, right? 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. And we can let you be on your way because we just have a few other items before we'll adjourn. Okay. So I don't know if folks noticed, but we did have one appointment on, on Thursdays. Oh. Um, and I can't yeah, remember. Oh, Is it somebody that anyone knows and wants to speak in? Uh, uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I'd be glad to do that. Thank you so much. Okay. And, and I'm assuming then we're just going to take it up at the December city services meeting. We'll still have time for to go to that meeting. So that leaves us then with December City Services. We can, I, we're probably not going to get another batch of appointments on the 21st. That's my guess, but we never know. But, but I can't remember if we did have someone in the queue that we were hoping to speak with. Remember, I'm leaving right at... Yeah, because the, there was something that we... Hmm. I'm just letting you know. I'm on the side for this community well, well, you know, we some were, we were, yeah, we were talking about downtown, and, and I and I, I I've, I've been in touch with Peter with his chair about that about, about, about <coughs> the main street redesign revision. Yeah, I can't remember. I'm not 
did we change the time of our meeting? Not for next, or? not for, I don't think so, but I'll, I will remind people that on occasion, it hasn't happened with this committee in a long, long time mm -hmm. because of appointments, but on occasion when there isn't something referred and we don't have a pressing department head, right. we might um, forego yeah. the December meeting in the, yeah. unless we find at the November 21st, oh no, we can't. We will hear. We, no, we will meet. We no. will meet at that first meeting. Sorry, we're not we at least one appointment. We're not going to let you get okay. out sharing the <laughs> final meeting. <laughs> All right then. Um, is there a preference? Because what we would need to do is contact the mayor's office and see. Or would we just like to just meet and take up this appointment and anything else that comes on the twenty-first? Anybody um, been hankering to meet with someone another committee you know, for a while? I just uh, let me finish. Please, please. I have to leave. I told you this was two months ago and again last month. All right. So. <laughs> oh, so you'd rather we just keep it short? Yeah. Short. Yes. Okay. Right. Then why don't we, why don't we take up the appointment? Anything that comes up on the twenty-first and anything else that Council and Ash wants us to take up. Yeah. The, the only thing about the appointment, I just know that Conscom has been. I don't know how quick this appointment has to happen. And that um, because Conscom has had struggled at their last meeting to have a quorum, yes. and yes. when and they can't meet, things start to pile up. Like there's a Maple Street project that they haven't heard yet. Yeah. And well, one thing we could do, since we have 17 minutes before the end of the meeting, yeah. is Councilor Bridwell could slip outside and make a quick phone call, come back and <laughs> give us his report. We could vote on the we could vote on the appointments right now, so that. We won't be in any other impediment to that CONSCOM uh, meeting. Would you be comfortable with that, uh, no, Council? Not really. <laughs> Would you like to meet again then but, next week? It'll only well, be the third well, November well, meeting we've had. Can, can, can I suggest? I, well, number one, I have an idea. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could find we could find out from the mayor's office how soon this appointment needs to be, happen sure. because. If they're having quorum problems, we should do it sooner than later. I and agree. maybe we could just quickly recess for uh, city services during our next yes. council meeting. Like we did last time. That, that, that was, yes. that was that That's was very good. good. Very good. good. That was my thought as well. And see, I've learned you can I'm, 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 I'm seeing <laughs> on another matter the chair of Conservation Commission tomorrow. But I'll, oh. I'll straight from the horse's mouth. Right, oh. good. Right. And if you uh, find is, that out, what is core you can is let me and Laura know, and we'll just have to communicate with Council President and get ourselves on the agenda yep. on the 21st. Right. And that would mean hopefully right. they won't have, uh, hopefully, they, maybe it'll only be one miss meeting that they'll be lack of quorum. Well, right. I think the next one is Thursday. So we so, wouldn't be able to do it by then anyway. No, because so. we have to go back right. to council. Yeah, so the, the, I think we're going on the fastest track possible. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right, so we're going to leave it with the possibility of a uh, break in the agenda on Thursday the 21st. And if there are, how about if we say that if there are no other appointments that come to us on the 21st, that we forego the December meeting since we'll have had three in November. Okay. Okay. So we'll leave, we won't know until then. We'll let her up. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll come up with something for us. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, uh, please, if people think of stuff. I mean, I'm happy to, I'm going to be here anyway. But I think it's December 2nd, isn't it? Yes. What's okay. that? The next Monday, yes. Um, yes. City Services. Yes. Okay, so okay. really, I'm not trying to get off the hook. I just don't not sure what people Is want there, to go. We do okay. have a meeting in December on the 2nd. That's the one you have to leave early. Yes. Yeah. Uh, is there any way we could bring it up earlier? You mean meet at another meeting in November? No, 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 no. What? For December 2nd. Oh, earlier in the day. Right. Yes, are, are people like okay with an earlier time on December 2nd? I think. I actually am flying. You're not even going to be here? No, no, oh. I am, but I. I, I I, oh, you're going I, to go to the airport. I fly into Bradley, getting back from a Thanksgiving visit at. Yeah. 2.15. So I'll I'll just barely make it 4 o'clock. Well, for the half hour. 2.15. So. You'd be here by 3.30. Uh, if, if you're talking about sure, I can't even. No, 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 no. I think. This is all you know what? I, you know what? Let's, let's consider it. Let's consider December 2nd. Let's plan on a short meeting. Yeah. So if we meet at 4 and Council of Arge is gone at 4.30. Right. That's because I'm getting picked up. Right. right. 
then if there is a brief presentation that anyone and I'm not really united. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. That's right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that sounds like we have a plan. I'll ask if there is a final motion. Sure, I thought we'd make a adjourn. motion to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded. No discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Okay.